it wasn't that uh, I started out wanting to enter the gaming industry. I was just into computers as a hobby. Various programs, I was drawing it myself. Mainly it was the financial accounting software and inventory management software of the company I was working for at the time, Koei. Then things like science and business calculations, writing by Mimore and making software by yourself. We talked about office automation for our company's operations. We made computers to help rationalize management. I tried it out. Uh, that's all without reason. I felt like I wasn't able to do 100% of what I wanted to do. So after work at night, I would make and play games on my own. I made this game software to enjoy myself and it's very interesting. Maybe people of my generation understand Japanese history. I thought there might be people who want to try doing that kind of thing. So back then, computer paper, there was a magazine called Maikon and when we put a black and white ad on its half page. It had a huge response and sold extremely well. And then playing with the next title, it was really interesting and I was so curious about it. We've had various reactions from customers saying they want games like this, which is fun and interesting. And when you create two characters and one scene, you keep getting more and more reactions. I can have direct communication with customers. And for me, the program I made, playing with it, feeling very fulfilling, that's what makes the job rewarding, I guess. People who like games are enjoying themselves. That's how it ended up being useful. Because I felt that way strongly, I gradually started developing mainly game software. It's internal work. Uh, I developed Nobunaga's Ambition in 1983. Uh, the first game, the Battle of Kawanakajima, was in 1981. During the two years that followed, we created various games. While making various games, I felt like I wanted to make a game set in the Sengoku period again. As for me, uh, my favorite daimyo was Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga, in 1582, during the Honoji incident, that Agemi Sushi was defeated, but uh, Oda Nobunaga disappeared uh, from history halfway through his aspirations. He must have felt uh, regretful about that. If Oda Nobunaga had not been defeated by Akechi Mitsuhide and had gone on to make a name for himself, is that the kind of Sengoku period it would have been? I think you would enjoy it even more if you played a game that lets you explore these kinds of historical what-ifs. I think game fans will enjoy it. With those feelings, I actually wanted to make and play such a game myself. It was 1983 when they made Nobunaga's Yabe. The reason I made Romance of the Three Kingdoms was because we received many letters from customers requesting it. There were requests to try playing games, and at that time there were about 30 people. Yes, it was the same earlier too. The development team expressed their desire to create a game 
about the Three Kingdoms. It has changed, and so have I. Speaking of the romance of the Three Kingdoms in Eiji Yoshikawa, Japanese. This is Ano. Sazushi. I'm writing it. It's very famous, and I have read it many times, so I thought it would be fun to play a game based on the romance of the Three Kingdoms, Willy Bay, Sazawa, and Sun Kwan Araki. We created the game Romance of the Three Kingdoms in 1985 in a hospital. Good night. So I believe that iconic games are very memorable to me. It's a game you should play. I first thought so in 1981. A game called the uh, Kawanaka Jimeno Hasen that I made and Nobunaga's Ambition from 1983 and Romance of the Three Kingdoms from 1985. Uh, these three titles are deeply ingrained in my mind. Simulation means experiencing technology. Mm. For example, in Nobunaga's ambition, you can experience the life of Oda Nobunaga. In Romance of the Three Kingdoms, you can experience the lives of Liu Bei, Cao Cao, and Sun Quan. Or pseudo-experiencing the era of the Three Kingdoms. The ability to experience it is one of the interesting aspects of a simulation game. Instead of tracing history, you can experience historical heritage in a way that has not been seen in history until now. You can create your own era of the Warring States period and your own era of the Three Kingdoms. It's about being able to say that kind of enjoyment in my own way. The fun of simulation games is being able to keep creating them. Originally, simulation games were board games and there were tactical level simulation games and strategic level simulation games. Many people enjoy tactics and strategies that depend on such scale and size the game originally existed over there thinking about and enjoying strategy and tactics these elements are also part of simulation games exciting I think that's one more thing As a manager aiming to become the world's number one digital entertainment company, it's the long-term vision of the senior tech group. So we first want to realize that vision. That is my dream. We are currently a publicly traded gaming company worldwide. Our company is currently ranked in the digital entertainment sector. I'm working hard to make it to the top 20. And once I get there, I'll aim for the top 10. For that reason, Japan surpassed 3 million units. Uh, next, I want to achieve a title that surpasses 5 million copies and makes it into the top I 20. I think it is important. If I were to give advice to myself 40 years ago, it would be to learn English sooner. You should release the English version's title in America as soon as possible. 